Acts chapter 17. Now, when they had passed through Amphiphias and Apollyana, they came to Thessalonica. Oh, look at that. First and second Thessalonians. Where was a synagogue of the Jews. So there are synagogues all over Asia, all over Europe. And Paul, as his manner was, went into them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Now, I don't know that three Sabbath days would be three weeks, or if there just happened to be three Sabbath holidays, because some of the Sabbaths were seven days long. He may, the ones that had, were seven days long, he may have spent three days, last three, or part of three days, or if it was regular sabbath that would be three weeks he walks in this he walks into the temple uh, the, uh, the synagogue sit down we already read in a previous message the, the minister would get up and read from the old testament is there anybody who has anything to say paul would probably raise his hand politely and say i do and then they would give him audience and i wonder what point in time that that would have stopped the work around hey if that guy comes to your synagogue, don't ask if there's anybody that's got to say anything because he's going to. And he's going to take people out of your services to this Jesus. And that's uh, verse 3. <clears throat> Open, oh, well, verse 2. And Paul, as was man it was, went into them three days, Sabbath journey, days, reason with them out of the scriptures. What scriptures does he have? Can I have that Old Testament scroll, please? What would he do with that Old Testament scroll? Let me show you the Messiah has come. Let me prove to you that Jesus Christ is the one that is spoken of in this Old Testament. And again, he doesn't bring no thrills. Brings the Bible. He didn't have to bring the Bible. He's using the Bibles right there in that synagogue. And he would, he would also have later on when he deals with the Christians, he would have the decree from Jerusalem. But he's talking to lost men. Opening legend that Christ must needs have suffered. So Christ's suffering is in the Old Testament. We know one spot, Isaiah 53. And risen again from the dead is in the Old Testament scriptures. How do they say, they say, well, how is it they say that Christ, he's going to die when the scriptures say he abides forever? Well, evidently, Paul knows more scripture than you do. And that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Well, there must be other Jesuses if Paul said, the one I'm preaching unto you, that's the Christ. He warns us in Corinthians that there is another Jesus. There's another spirit. There's another gospel. So not only do we have the scripture as far as salvation, I'm going to kick it up one more knocks in the church. Now, I'm not one of them Pauline people. Whatever Paul says, that's the law and everything else. No, I, all 66 books. But if you're going to have the salvation to go to heaven, New Jerusalem today in the church age, you better have the doctrine that Paul has. You better have the Jesus that Paul has. You got anything else, you're not saying, they shall call me Lord that day, and I never knew them. And some of them believe. Well, amen. Glory to God. And consorted with Paul and Silas, and of, a, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, well, there's Gentiles, and of the chief women, not a few. Man, it, it, salvation is being wrought. It's growing. What's the trouble today? Evolution's a lie. It's not getting better. If, if everything was getting better and better according to evolution, you imagine under that standard today, more than the, the world would, be, would get saved if you preached and went to their doors? Well, that's not happening. Satan's getting closer and closer to his seven years. But the Jews which believed not, uh-oh, moved with envy. 
Well, look at how many times that's shown up with Christians doing the work. And I have seen that word show up with Christians, supposedly they call themselves, when we do our work according to the Bible. Took unto them lewd fellows of the baser sort. It'd be like Robin, men is, Robin Hood is merry, wicked men. And gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar. Now, the Jews are causing persecution. Now, remember where we are. We are in Thessalonica. This is the book, First and Second Thessalonians. Paul writes to this church, and that church, first, well, not the church, first, the church in Thessalonica is a place and a church that has been and will be persecuted throughout its life. When Paul writes to him, he writes to him of persecution, of death, banishment. This church in Thessalonica suffers for Jesus Christ. And it's already begun when Paul starts preaching. As soon as Paul opens up his mouth, the persecution comes and it stays in this church area. The city in uproar and assaulted a house of Jason. <clears throat> now, Romans 16, 21 has a Jason. I don't know if this is the same one. But Jason is found in the name of Romans 16, verse 21. I think it says something good about a fellow servant, something like that. It could be. And sought to bring them out to the people. So, Jason is a man in Thessalonica. He has somehow housed the apostles or the disciples or Christians. They know about it. They go into his house to gather an uproar, a riot, to this one man's house. Don't tell me you're persecuted in America when you haven't. They know you're, you're a Christian. They come in your house because they know you're a Christian and you're serving Christians and they start assaulting you. And when they found them not, the, the, the apostles, the disciples, they drew Jason and certain brethren onto the rulers of the city. Man, they dragged Jason and Christians to the rulers, crying, These that have turned the world upside down. That's where that expression When you say, Turn the world upside down, will you stop stealing from Christians? That expression, turn the world upside down, are Christians that are making the world angry at the preaching of Jesus Christ. And you have no idea what you're, the world upside down. These have turned the world upside down and come hither off. That's a great testimony of Jason. He's just started. They're after the disciples, they're after Paul. So Jason, if he gets saved and got saved, he must be doing the same thing if they say that about him. That's a great testimony. This guy is causing such an uproar. We ought to have that as Christians. We ought to be known in the in the city and town councils where we live. The police department ought to know. I hear this guy screaming. We know about this guy. He's Jesus or something. It's okay. He's not a lunatic. He's just a problem. And we send cop cars every time going to, oh, there's people at our door, blah, blah. They're not selling anything. They don't need a license. They're bringing their church doctrine to your house. Uh, you know, they'll move on. They won't bother you. You ought to be known. You know, it ought to be known what day, what time, something you do something to the city officials. Yeah, they just. So when it comes time to round up the Christians, you better be where you were. I mean. So, turn the world upside down. When Jason had received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar. Ooh, Caesar had all kinds of gods. So, the testimony here of Jason and the, and the disciples, they are not like us. They don't follow the government. Oh, that's a great one today. They go against the government. Really? You want to read Facebook's post from last week? 
Your Facebook post in in chapter 17 actually they have nothing to do with the government man they're just preaching that jesus they're turning the world upside down they're odd they're different how dare them saying that there is another king oh put that with current events how about of jason receive and do all contrary to decrees of obama saying that there's another president one jesus let's bring it up to date They don't care who the who the government. They don't care who the government is. They don't care who the the person. It's Jesus and Jesus only. One Jesus. And it's true because Jesus is king. And that's what they're preaching to the Jews. That will be their king in the new earth. I guarantee that's what Paul said in the, in the in the synagogue. King Jesus. That land grant. You're going to get that land grant. And guess who's going to be king? Jesus. Guess who's going to be the prince? David. Scripture with scripture. He's going against Caesar. That's exactly what they said at the Jesus trial. We'll have no other king but Caesar. Really? And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. Mass hysteria. They're preaching Jesus. <gasps> Give me a blue pill with a white pill. Give me another bottle of, of booze. Can't believe they're doing it. They are actually preaching Jesus. <clears throat> and when you do preach Jesus, you, you trouble the people. Try it sometime. Try going out in all the world and preach the gospel and see how much you trouble them. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jacob, uh, Jason, excuse me, and others, they let them go. And as security, I'm told, is it's like a bails bond. Jason paid money to release them on that kind of fashion. So they had to be some kind of arrest. And Jason said, listen, I'll take care of it. I'll pay it. And they let him go. So Baal's bondsmen for Christians preaching the word. America so bad. How many how many Baal's bondsmen have had to have bonds for Christians preaching the word before a judge? This is Thessalonica. This is going on. First and second Thessalonians. We have a church that we support as a family that has a church right here. Persecuted. They're hauling them off in prison. That's what Paul was doing. But they weren't bringing them back to Jerusalem. They were holding right there in their city. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night. All right, Paul. All right, Paul, get out of here. It's getting hot water. Go. Preach the gospel. Pray for us. And may God bless us. That's why he writes to these people. That's why he writes to them twice. By night unto Berea, whose coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. There he goes again. Where are you going to meet the Jews anywhere else? On a Sabbath day, church service, in their synagogue. How are you doing? Listen, Paul, man, he's here, he's here in Bible preaching. I don't know how good it was or how bad it was, but he walks in. He's here in the Old Testament being read. And they would call us time. Anybody got anything to say? Yeah, I do. I dare churches do that. Because I would go to those churches. I would sit there and oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Anybody got anything good to say? Woohoo! Me. I carry my King James Bible. So thank you very much. And take the message that was preached and show Jesus Christ. I'd do that in a Catholic church. I'd, you have to wake me up when it came to that time. But, uh. If I had an opportunity to go up in that pulpit and speak Jesus Christ, I'd love that opportunity. You say, hey, Paul's going back to his old religion, isn't he? He's going back to the synagogues, preaching the truth. Though these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Now, this is Berea. In that they received the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Getting tired of it yet? 
Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. This old mother earth is going bye-bye, but the word is not. Jesus Christ is the word, John 1.1. 1, 1. You get sick and tired of the word, well, that's where you're going. That's what saved you. If you love Jesus Christ, you'll keep his word. It's all about word. If you're not saved by the word, you're not saved. If you're not living by the word, you're not living. Receive the word with all readiness of mind. And search the scriptures daily whether these things were true. Now John's going to write something about this in 1 John later on. He's going to write, try the spirits. These guys... When they heard something, they would run to the Old Testament. They had the Old Testament. They say, oh, is that true? These guys were taking Paul's message and say, well, let me go check that out. Hold on. Okay, yeah. They would try. And they would judge and study the word every single day. I do that with my family. Every single day, outside of sickness or any trouble like that, they get the word of God. My son got in trouble. I just wrote him a letter today. I said, you sit down right now and you write 10 verses of your sin right now. And I told him, do it. Find 10 verses about your sin. Now you tell me at any time where I missed talking about those verses or any church that you were under didn't talk about those verses. Then don't go cry baby about me. You knew exactly what you were doing. Come on families. Come on fathers. Come on husbands. Why ain't you searching the scriptures daily? These men had to make a living. These men had to buy food and clothes and take care of their family. And yet they still search the scriptures every day. And you know what happened when they searched the scriptures? They got saved. That's a testimony of my grandfather, a Roman Catholic. He honestly, he read the Bible every single night. He prayed every single night. He no Mary, stuff like that. By him doing the word of God, it was simple the Bible being open to him that he received Christ as his Savior. And then later on, the Bible was open to realize that his church was wrong. And he, man, he got out of it by the next Sunday. He was in a Bible believing Baptist church. Yeah. You got to be, listen, there are going to be some people, they do read the Bible. And God says, hey, I see that. I'll send you somebody. You won't believe some places this, this word gets. Now, I understand with, with the prison ministry that I was giving away Bibles, and some Bibles, the paper is good for cigarette uh, paper, whatever you call it, roll cigarettes with. Well. But I also know a missionary, which I don't know what ever happened to him, but a missionary in the Magonia Desert. He said, there's a testimony of a man that got saved. He's walking in the middle of the desert somewhere. Desert. I mean, what, like you, and right, right in the sand, he found a Bible. How it ever got there? And he picked up the Bible and his journey was reading it until he got to where he was going. And where he got to going was this church. And this guy trusted Christ because he picked up the Bible and was reading it just like that Ethiopian eunuch. I have been knocking on doors, carrying a black Bible underneath my arm with, with a fellow brother in the Lord with me, carrying his Bible. You knock on the door, and it's just like you hear stair, going upstairs, going out doors, closing doors, they're running. You get, they're running from a book. I went for a job interview today in the office I was in. They had a NIV, but still, with a Bible sitting there, and it had little tabs like I have. And I'm like, wow, that person's reading the Bible. I looked up on the wall, there was a cross. Said, oh, whoever this person's office is, Lord, I pray for. I pray to get it right Bible, but that's that's a testimony. That says who you are when you walk in that office. There's a Bible, and there's a cross, and it's got tabs. Here's a Bible reader. All right, the Word. Searched it daily. Therefore, many of them believe, not all. Not all. So, as I said, here's a guy, he's got a Bible in his office. Is he really saved? He's got a cross on the wall. Is he really saved? I can tell you Christians who had Bibles in the backseat of their car, the only time it was grabbed was Sunday morning. 
I've seen Christians leave church with the with the Bible sliding off the roof of their car as they exited the church. I've seen I've seen teenagers take their Bibles fucking across a, a basketball court to play basketball after church. They got a Bible. Grandma had a Bible with a family tree and all that. But did Grandma read it? Did Grandma truly search the scriptures? Therefore many of them received also honorable women which were Greeks and of men not a few. That's a lot. All these people you're going to know in glory one day. And they're going to be happy to say, hey, you read about us. Try this. Just a chapter read. Uh, go to your average Baptist church and people come up. Say, you ever hear of Thessalonica? You ought to hear that. There's two books in your Bible. You ever hear about Berea? Ever hear of Antioch? What would be the answers? And yet, if you study and read your Bible every day, hey, we're a Berea. Listen, I don't know exactly what, I, I know it's in the Bible. I know it was, this, it, it was a place that Paul went. Yeah, at least you know that much. Some people don't even know what Habakkuk is. And never will know till we get the glory. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was, be, was preached of Paul at Berea, the word of God has, has angered them. Not bounce houses. The word of God angered the Jews, so they came thither also and stirred up the people. The, the Jews from Thessalonica came down to Berea because they heard Paul was preaching the word, and we're going to give you a hard time. Mark Thessalonica in your Bible as man they persecuted. There are, they are chasing Paul. You remember what Paul was doing? With Christians, Paul, you're reaping what you're sowing. You were chasing Christians as a lost man. Now lost men are chasing you. Rest assured, except for the mercy and grace of God, you will reap what you sow. It's a law. You know why? Many people will commit suicide because their ship has come in and they've seen what is on the ship, the cargo. Whatever they put in their body that was wrong. Whatever they did with their body was wrong. Whatever words they had were wrong. Whatever they done and wrong. That ship came into port. They looked at that ship and... You know? Okay, the, the illustration I always use. I mean, if you're if you become such an idiot, you chop off your arm before you're saved. You make you make yourself armless. And then after you get saved, you can pray all you want. That arm's not growing back. You have to go through the rest of your life as doing something stupid. You got a bad bad kidneys from, from drinking something you ought not be drinking? Well, I don't know how you can pray to God and say, God, you know, only for mercy and grace that you don't get as worse. But you did it to yourself. Diabetes, it's all my fault. You want to go through all the ice creams, all the cakes, and all the, the, the sugary things I had through my whole life? It's my fault. All I can say, God, to show me a little mercy and grace. But the hole in my foot is my fault. The gluttony, it's under its under the blood of Jesus Christ. But I still got to pay. The wages of sin is death. Now we may get mercy and grace. We may not die. We may see the rapture. Well, amen. Glory to God. But if the Lord tarries, we die because we're sinners. And we will pay the penalty for sinning. That's plain and simple. Paul is being chased by unsaved people because he, unsaved, was chasing Christians. 
So if it happened to Paul, what makes you think it's not going to happen to you? Now, listen, God may show mercy and grace. He may not allow you to do to, to reap and sow something. You better thank God, get down on your knees and glorify that. Now, I will not have that suffered in his life. So they, uh, they came there also and stirred up the people. Then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus, Timothy abode there still. So Paul's being rushed on. Now he's leaving Silas and Timotheus to work in Berea. And I would also assume that, you know, it's maybe not, I had never looked at a map. Thessalonica is not too far. If these Jews can come down in to persecute them. And they that conducted Paul brought him to Athens. Oh, from worse to worse. And received a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed they departed. So Silas and Timothy are going to meet Paul. Paul hey, Paul wrote them. Or they wrote Paul. See the letters now? We're going to meet you, Paul. We know where you are. We'll meet you a certain day. There's the letters. Now, it may not made the Bible, but there's, <coughs> there's the writing back and forth. And this could be a letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. And say, hey, you won't believe what happened here. This is what's going on here. Come, help. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, the spirit was stirred up in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. How would you like to have God and Holy Spirit write down your city is known for idolatry? That's one of the things the council said. Hey, no idolatry. But they're not saved. This will be the first time they'll hear the word. Therefore disputed he in the synagogues with the Jews. See, look at that. Went right back to the synagogues. And with devout persons in the market daily. He went to the markets. Like we go to the farmer's market. Can't find what you're doing here in, in the Bible. It happened in Athens. Paul went right to the marketplaces. And with them they met with him. Now it's kind of funny that we go from idolatry to him discussing matters in the synagogue of the Jews. And I got to call a question. Are the Jews there involved in that idolatry too? Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews. He didn't dispute anywhere else in the synagogue. He just got up, taught, and preached. But here it disputed, and the, the verse before it mentions idolatry. That's one of the sins that Judah had before they were taken over by the Babylonians. History repeated itself. Then there were certain philosophers of the Epicureans, mere chance, pleasure, the soul and body died. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow will die. That's what they are. And the Stoics, eternal matter, everything is eternal, irresistible fate. Happy by true good things in life, self sufficient immunity to suffering and to bad fortune. I don't know how these guys live. I mean, but that's their teaching. Eat, drink, and be merry. Oh, oh, you know, that's going to happen to you if you do good. And some said. What will this babbler say? What about you babblers? Others and others some he seemed to be a he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods. They're in Greece. There's nothing but gods all around. Because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. If there's one thing they got about Paul, what was it they got about Paul? He preached Jesus and he preached resurrection. What are you known for? What do you bring? What's your message? 
And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, teaching, whereof thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. They just want another philosophy to talk about. They're not interested in Jesus. Okay, we're going to see, watch. For all the Athens, Athenians, and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but to either to tell or to hear some new thing. New and improved. We got the latest edition. These people would fall for it. I'm glad they didn't have a TV there in the home shopping club or anything because they'd be broke with all a bunch of junk in their house. We got this new, you know. So Paul, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. Does that sound like a church? Does that sound like a synagogue? Sounds like he's going to have an open air preaching. And said, ye men of Athens. He had to be loud, wasn't he? I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Ooh, Paul, well, to preach love. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. Just in case we forgot. You see how many gods there were in Greece? Just in case we forgot one. We don't want to make him angry. So we'll make an altar to that unknown God we don't know, so he don't get angry. Whom therefore ye ignorantly, call him ignorant, <laughs> ignorantly worship. Now ready? Him declare I to you. That unknown God that you worship, I'm going to show who he is. How's that? All right, here he is. God that made the world and all things therein. Oh, so he's a creator, not evolutionist. Paul believed in a creator. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. So this is a God that's in control of everything. Dwelling not in temples made with hand. Oh, so he's not in the building. That's great. So when you say we're going to meet God in the church, Paul says, no, you're not. You can't confine God. You can't box up God. Neither is worship with men's hands. You can't make idols. You can't make statues. You can't make anything with your hands for God. Nothing of God is man-made. How's that sound? As though he needed anything. <laughs> What's God going to need? Come on, really? You realize all the gold, silver, platinum, uranium, and all that material that you worship on earth is all made by God for man to use? Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. He's given it to us. We can't give it to him. And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. All right. Let's just take the basic fundamentals. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. You can take any three of those canned blood and you can put it into each other as far as that principle of the breakdown O positive and a pot whatever that is if you can match those letters positive or negative you can use your blood to help someone else all the face of the earth now there are nations and has determined the times before appointed so you can't rush the rapture. You can't rush the Antichrist. God has already predetermined the times and the bounds of their habitation. 
When you look at lines on a map, this is Poland, this is Russia, this is Zimbabwe, this is Mexico, this is Washington, this is Canada, this is the Antarctic. The Bible says God drew those lines. At one time, God allowed the, the Roman Empire to have the vast empire it did. There was a time that Israel had their whole entire land, but they blew it. There's a time that America was only 13 colonies. Then he moved it further. Then he moved it further. Then he allowed us to go to California. If California falls away and, and something else, God allowed it. Sorry to say, as far as that thing where, where Japheth shall dwell in the tents of Shem, God drew those reservations. God has determined the bounds of the nations and their blood. Verse 26. That they should seek the Lord. Why is Ham in Africa? Why is Israel in the Middle East? Why is Europe where it is? Why is America where it is? Why is South America where it is? Why are all these people separated by a line? The purpose is that they may seek God. You know why the colored man is not turning to God today? Because the white man in America has ruined his bound. It said in Genesis... That he is to be a servant of servants. Ham does good as a servant. And you may not like that preaching. You may go right in the streets. But that's what the Bible says. Ham needs to be put under a servitude for him to reach God. Japheth needs to be that older brother to reach out to God. And that God had to come from Shem. So they seek of the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. God's there. God is long suffering. He's not willing that any should bear it. He's there. It's your heart that's wrong. It's your heart that's rejecting him. How many people are going to go down to the farmer's market and not even realize they're going to meet God? If Lord willing, we are there and able to be there. Well, the ones that are there all the time know that God's going to be there. But those that just, you know, hey, I heard about a farmer's market. There's God. Now, what are you going to do with him? I'm going to buy my fruit, get in my car, and drive off. Well, and you bypass God. But you can never say, oh, I didn't, God never told me. I never knew. I had no idea. Not if you walk by God preaching the word what were you supposed to do you're supposed to stop and say hey listen sir can you turn that thing down can you open up that bible and tell me what i need to do like that prisoner we read last night sirs what must i do to be saved that's the question god was there in that prison what if that jailer never asked what must i do to be saved those prisoners if i let loose paul if i let loose something like that that guy would not have got saved he'd been in hell burning today but that prisoner had to stop God and say, hey, God, what do I need to be saved? Okay, now let me bring my attention to that prison. <coughs> and the word was brought, preached, brought, past tense. God's there. He went on the road to Emmaus there, the two disciples with Jesus. They're going to turn off for the night. Jesus would have kept on going. They'd say, hey, sir, come stay with us. It's getting nighttime. Come by with us. And then they would never have to realize that that dinner table, that was Jesus. If they would let him keep on going. You guys say to Jesus, hey, stop. How many times did it happen with the blind men? Jesus. And he stopped the whole procession. What do you guys want? The ships, the disciples on the sea, there's a big wicked storm. Jesus is walking by them. Jesus. Yeah, what do you guys want? <laughs> you. Okay. Storm seas, got in the boat, he got the other side. 
When you hear the word of God, the guy comes to your door, the guy gives you a gospel track, the guy's yelling his lungs out, you're supposed to say, Stop, Jesus, what am I supposed to do? All right, go to that person and talk to him. Cornelius is sitting there, he's praying, the angel says, go get Peter. Cornelius went and got Peter. That, that Ethiopian eunuch, yes, Philip went to him. But the Ethiopian eunuch had to say, hey, listen, I'm reading this about this guy here. I don't know. Is he talking about, is Isaiah talking about himself or is he talking about someone else? And then Philip took that passage and spoke to him Jesus. When I went to, finally went to the Baptist church and my grandma invited me to, I sat there and listened to the message in the middle of the week. I said, hey, I got to do something. I have no idea. I got to meet with somebody. I reached out to God. I said, God, what do I do? All right, I'll get a couple of men to come sit with you, and I'll have a Bible open. Now, what are you going to do? I want to receive Christ. I don't want to go to hell. Good. What's the next step? What do I need to do? You got to get baptized. I got to get baptized? All right. I got to be baptized. We'll set it up two weeks or one week. I got to go knocking on doors. I got to go tell people of Jesus. Let's go. For in him we live. Uh, for in him we live. Our life is in the breath of God. If God says, you know what, that's it. You get no more seconds. You get no more seconds. And they get the paddles, they do CPR, and you live again. God says, okay, I'll give you more life. But they can get all they can do at the hospital. God says, you're done. That hospital, with all the facilities, is not going to bring you back. Your life is in God. And move. God can tweak your body tonight while you're sleeping that you'll never move again. You may have to use a wheelchair. You may have to use crutches. You may be lying in bed in the rest of your life. God is in charge of that. You better thank God when you when you sit up in that bed that God is able to make you sit up. When you're able to put your socks on, you better thank God for putting your socks on. You ever thank God you're driving down the road that that right foot does just right with the gas pedal? Your hands do just right with the steering wheel and the shifter lever? You do good? Or you just sip the coffee and you do texting on the phone? What do you do? You better give God the glory. And have our being. You are who you are because of God. Oh, I should have been born. Oh, I should have been. Oh, no, I'm, a, I'm a product of a, of a bad. No, no. That's where exactly where God brought you. God puts you where you are to find him. If I was raised in a in a, a king's royalty house, I may never found God. If I were raised in, in a politician's home, I probably never found God. <clears throat> If I were to be born down here in Florida and say, I may never found God. I am where I'm being. I'll tell you right now, I believe with all my heart, had I ever wanted to be what I wanted to be after a law enforcement, a plumber or electrician, I would never be married today. Or probably maybe un unhappily married to someone I wasn't supposed to be married to. I'm not going to go with the story there, but just, just by two chance of two people who wanted something different in our lives end up together, and we can't say, oh, that was a bad class assignment. We didn't really want that. No, no. We let God do in his life, and now we're happy. As certain also of your own poets have said, okay, this is what your own idiots have said. For we are also his offspring. I'm an offspring of God by the Holy Spirit, by the gospel. I'm a, I'm a son of God. According to the genealogy of according to the genealogy of Jesus Christ, Adam was a son of God. Adam had no father, he had no mother, he had God. For as much then as we are the, turn page, just lost my little thing. We are the offspring of God. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone or graven by art and man's devices. And you go back and read verse 16 that the whole city is given idolatry. 
He's preaching against the statues. He's preaching against the stone. He is preaching against the gold. He is preaching against everything of all the Athen gods. You ought not to preach man's sin. That's exactly what Paul's doing. And he's doing it in a, in a, in a public place. He's doing it on a hill, out in the open, open preaching. He's, he's denouncing their sins. What are you going to say about it? I can imagine pointing. That gold thing over there. That stone thing over there. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. There was a time that God said, um, they don't know any better. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. How's that? You remember we read in the, in the synagogues that there were Greeks there? Well, those Greeks, they say, you know what? There's something wrong with this religion. I'm going to go to the God of the Hebrews. So God opened up the doors and said, hey, you go there, you'll hear about me. Now you wait a little patience and Paul will come along and tell you totally about me. But God's now telling these Athens, I'm not accepting that no more. I'm done with it. I am done. You need to repent and get right. Right now. Acts 17. AD 54. You need to dissolve that. And get to me and repent. If not. You'll burn. You'll be your sin. If that sin is not under the blood of Jesus Christ. As Paul's preaching. You'll burn. Because he has appointed a day. In which he, God, will judge the unknown God. They don't know. So judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is righteousness and he is judge, Revelation 20. Before Revelation is even thought of by, by John through the, the spirit of the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ. Before Jesus Christ revealed anything to John... Paul's already preaching that great white throne judgment. Whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men. And that he has raised him from the dead. You're supposed to have an assurance of your salvation. That's also mentioned in 1 John chapter 5, later on, written. Well, how's that? Scripture with Scripture now. And Paul doesn't have John's Scripture. John don't have Paul's Scripture. Well, John will get it later when he writes the first and second John. <clears throat> and when they, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And that was told to you in Proverbs chapter 1. Wisdom cries out the street. Some are going to mock. Some are simple. Some are, um, I can't think of a word now, Scor scorners. Some are fools. So if you take a public ministry, whatever it is, you better believe that they're going to mock you. And don't let it upset you. Paul's being mocked right now. And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed among from it. So wait a minute, Paul said... We want to hear you more, Paul. We, we, we want you to stay. And Paul takes off. Well, let's go back to verse 21 real quick. The parentheses. An important fact. For all the Athens and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but to either to tell or to hear some new thing. So when they say, Paul, we want to hear more, they just want the story. It was a good story to them. It made them feel good. It made them think. But it did not make them turn to God. Paul did not break out the sinner's prayer for these people because their heart was not right. He said, I'm leaving you. You don't want the truth. You just want to hear me talk. Bye. It's their heart condition again. Bye. So Paul departed from among them. How be it? Certain men claved unto him and believed. Paul left those guys, but some say, hey, 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 Paul, hey, wait. 
We want to believe. We're going to follow you. Among them, which was Diosius. <clears throat> you know what? In glory, he's going to get a new name, even though I got it wrong. The Aeropagite. And a woman named Damarius. She'll get a new name. And others with them. Look at that. We're even giving names of Christians in the Bible. There they are. You, there's a brother and a sister in the Lord from Athens, Greece. And you're going to see him one day. I hope you know who they are so if they come walking up to you. Hey, you had a great time with my name, didn't you? Diarist. Well, don't worry. Yep, you're right. I got a new name. You know?